So with the UK and most of the world being put on total lockdown, exotic travel to far off places is obviously put on hold at the moment. You'd expect landscape photographers to be a bit down right now, but you'd be wrong. So those of us, like myself, who've continued to enjoy photography, both safely and social distance, once we were bored taking the same pictures again and again and again, never looking twice at a place like this. This is a nice place to take your dog a walk, certainly nowhere you'd go for a good days of landscape photography. With the lockdown, we're looking at everything with a refreshed enthusiasm. We're taking those little details, going to those little places where Everything's in walking distance now. We're making the most of what we've got. And really, we're just showing off the beauty of the UK landscape. So for today's photography fun, we're gonna be looking at two lenses. The first is an 18mm f2.8 autofocus. Second is a 75mm f1.8 autofocus. Both of these lenses are for the FE mount and for Sony. And both of them are part of Sam Yang's tiny range. The others being a 24, 35 and a 45 mil. These two things are light. 75 mil is only 230 grams. This 18 mil is 145 grams. You could have 10 of these and wouldn't be the weight of some lenses that you put in your bag. For most people, landscape photography means getting out on top of mountains, capturing the sunrise, capturing the sunsets but it generally means putting a bit of effort in. And doing a big hike means heavy bag, means tripod, means camera, means lenses, it means food, water. So Samyang have developed these to be light, to be small, to fit in your bag really, really easily. That means more room for breakfast, more room for those snacks at the top of the mountain, and maybe a little bit of chocolate as well. Because of wide angle distorts and enhances perspective, you need to approach a scene a little bit differently than you would a longer focal length. What this means is objects near the lens would actually appear larger than they would do further away, even if in fact they are the same size. However, we can use this to our advantage and have a really strong foreground element, just like these images I've took previously. This is my setup. I've got nice and low to the floor, to accentuate this rock and moss in the foreground. I love the colours of it, especially when you contrast it against the almost barren trees. What I've done, I've set it up at ISO 100, I'm at F11, and what I will be doing, because there's quite a lot of dynamic range in my image, I will be bracketing. So there is almost our practice shot. Let's move on to the next place I have in mind. Let's show you how we can really make these two different focal lengths really come into their own.
So, as you can see, it's actually a few days later since the last little bit, and conditions have changed. Um, I actually stopped filming because, again, kind of conditions were changing again, but more the worst kind of rain. And then, obviously, all the snow came, and now everything just looks absolutely beautiful. So we'll carry on where we left off. And what we're going to do is have a look how the focal length changes an image fairly drastically and how we can use that to our advantage. So the shot I have in mind here is a perfect use for a 75mm. If I put my 18mm on, my foreground interest would actually get lost and look quite small. So with a 75mm on, what it does, not only does it bring it closer because of the focal length, it also compresses the background. So the background actually looks a lot bigger makes the foreground look bigger and it looks, makes them actually look closer together because of that. There we have it, a couple of quick tips, tricks in using an 18mm against a 75mm. Once again, an 18mm gives you an ultra wide angle field of view. It distorts around the edges, making those close objects seem really big compared to the background. And then a 75mm will bring that background closer to us, compress the scene completely. And with that focal length, of course, bring objects a little bit further away, closer to us. Here we used both 18mm and 75mm, use them to the advantage and use those fast apertures to separate the background from the foreground. So if you're thinking next time whether to bring an 18mm for landscape photography, what most people do, or a 75mm for landscape photography, with Sam Yang's tiny range you can actually bring both and it won't even make much of a difference to your bag. There is however one thing we haven't touched on can't really do with a 75mm but you can with an 18mm and you need a fast aperture. That's this. Astrophotography. So for this you need a wide angle lens with a fast aperture and the 18mm f2.8 is absolutely perfect. And the full frame is for full 18mm, 2.8 is just as fast as you need it and then all we need as well and light you can turn on and off and um, you may think that's why not only so you can see the camera settings so you can do a bit of light painting as well if I turn this off it's pitch black so we need to do a little light painting in our foreground which is the church you won't be able to see that shine a light on it no you can't see it so the church behind me is what, five minutes walk, probably not even that to be honest. It's actually just in my village, so this is a perfect foreground. The moon isn't out, it's a crystal clear sky, although it is really, really cold. So, what we need to do is put on the bracket mode. I'm going to set images up for maybe 10 15 seconds and just keep the camera just doing that constantly, constantly, constantly just doing that. I'm going to do a little bit of light painting with this light and then I'm going to worry about getting the stars afterwards as a separate shot.